Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's bird video. Day 10 will take us to the 23rd of March and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended Jeff Ayres and ECM Ensembles. They run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four. It gets us well into the first half of April and I should guess I'm back for you in a moment, just to say that first video is there, it was our 6MPQ forecast, and we've released a nice little verification uh, video for the winter 2024-25 forecast that we released at the beginning of the winter, at the beginning of December, um, so have a look at that, see how we did, and see how the winter overall panned out. Please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos, and contact back to everyone for getting that around 18 subscribers, 1-8 will get us to 19.6k, so it could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome, thank you so much everyone. And I uh, hope you're having a lovely, uh, lovely Thursday. This Thursday, is it? Yes, <laughs> lovely, lovely Thursday uh, as well. Uh, just say that if you can uh, afford to do so, please can you consider giving a little donation to uh, Gals, whether it's via our PayPal page. The link is in the description uh, with this uh, video. So uh, we'll give you a shout out in the videos and say thank you very much for uh, your donation if you do that. And it's helping to pay for the channel and, you know, helping to pay for me to be able to do this uh, content. We're primarily funded by advertisements and, of course, our amazing channel members as well. But uh, every little helps, as they say. And um, we're in the quiet time uh, now, so uh, money gets a little bit tight at uh, this time of year. So if you could give, uh, uh, give a little donation, then uh, that would be really really helpful to me and uh, to Gaz Weathervid. Thank you so much everyone. Right, okay, well, we're going to start off in the stratosphere. So, this is how temperatures are currently looking at uh, 10 HPA over the Arctic and over the uh, North Pole, which came from the JMA. Of course, we had the uh, stratospheric warming a few days ago. We lifted the temperature up by about 40 degrees at 10 HPA. We're actually dropping the temperature ever so slightly now. See the black line just starting to tick down very slightly, but still well above average, still well above the grade line. I think we'll see that black line rising again, actually, when we get into uh, the week. And I mean, only part of next week that might lift up to around that sort of level uh, by the beginning of uh, next week. Another uh, warming is on the way. If we go low down to 30 HPA, well, there, warming is continuing, and uh, we are now sitting. At about minus uh, 27, something like that, a few days ago. <coughs> so, sorry, everyone. A few days ago, we was hovering around minus 75. So, really dramatic warming going on at 30 HPA, even more so than, uh, you know, at 10 HPA. It wasn't all that long ago, beginning of February. It was down close to minus 90 there. Uh, goodness gracious me. Now, uh, the sudden stratospheric warming, major sudden stratospheric warming event continues. If you have a look at the uh, latest GFS run, here it is. So, uh, you can see the uh, yellow colours here over the uh, North Pole. That's the temperature starting to come down now at 10 HPA from uh, the warming uh, Earlier on in the week, but check this out in about three or four days' time, another dramatic warming taking place over Russia and uh, moving towards the pole as well around Monday and Tuesday. So, um, no, that's just going to reinforce the first warming, uh, to be honest, and send the zone wind uh, back into uh, reverse. More about that in a second. And then that warming kind of just sits over the uh, North Pole, the temperature starting uh, to come down as we move through the third week of March. Basically, by then, the stratospheric polar vortex is done for, um, and it's been pretty much obliterated uh, by that point. And, of course, then, back gets the 29th March, then we'll be waiting to see what, if any, tropospheric response we, we might get. So, uh, zona winds are currently still in reverse. It's coming from weather is cool. Now, uh, we're currently here with the uh, zona wind at the moment. Reversal uh, continues. So, the sudden stratospheric warming event basically continues. Now, we might see the zona wind actually ticking up to ever, ever slightly positive territory over the weekend. When we get that next warming, which uh, drops it down again as we go through into uh, next week. So, um... You know, basically, the zone wind is going to be in reverse if that's right for uh, the rest of March, other than that little tick up that we get <laughs> just there uh, over the weekend and possibly into the opening day or so 
of uh, next week. We'll keep monitoring, we'll keep you posted, uh, and as I say, we'll very soon be looking uh, to see what, if any, chopper spread response we might get to all of these developments. Latest wind from that from EarthNoldSchool.net shows that uh, northerly winds continue. So uh, we continue to push down this north to northeast wind, courtesy of an area of high pressure sitting around uh, Iceland and through into the mid Atlantic as well. If we drag the map down. You can see that uh, the air originates from a long way north with this. It's a proper Arctic source uh, airstream. If this was January, it would be bitter, bitter cold, you know. But uh, as it's like March, then obviously it's modified quite a lot. But it does have a chill to it. At least bring wintry showers uh, with it. And those wintry showers might become a little bit more widespread, actually, uh, tonight. So check out the uh, 6 a.m. forecast if you want to know more about that. But all the wind is continue, continuing to reduce the central England temperature. So we're now sitting at 7.5. That is 1.9 degree above the 61 to 1990 average. And it's provisional to uh, yesterday to the 12th of March. I reckon that will continue to come down over the remainder of the week. And probably into the weekend as well as uh, we'll have more cold nights to come. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. Looking at Bolton today, another suggested location for this part of the video. So red light is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Bolton. Obviously, we're starting off the below average, cold and average at the moment. I said to stay colder than average for probably around another week or so as well. We find that the upper air temperature then recover back closer to normal as we go through the third week of March and into the last week of the month. There, there is quite a bit of up and down going on uh, with that so uh, it won't be continuously mild or cold I don't think through that uh, uh, final sort of 10 days or so of the month precipitation wise going to be a lot of dry weather for the next week and then turning a bit more unsettled although that doesn't look quite as wet as yesterday's ensemble graph did actually so I think the model output might be backing off the idea of a flip into uh, unsettled weather through the last uh, week to 10 days or so of the month but more about that when we go through the chart data temperature normally is next five days are coming out cold of an average for the west of Europe UK and Ireland included in that, the 6 to 10 day temperature anomaly shows a bit of a recovery. We lose a cold and average temperature anomalies and go near normal, maybe slightly above average. And the 10 to 14 day temperature anomaly again coming out near average. That gets us to the 27th of March. Precipitation anomalies the next five days looking very dry, uh, actually, for the next seven days, I should say, gets us to the uh, 20th of March looking very, very dry there. In the 4 to 10 day uh, time frame, also looking uh, pretty dry as well. And then in the 8 to 14 day time frame, well, still dry than average, maybe uh, closer to normal in the uh, east. But I think the uh, GFS has shifted a little bit more towards the drier side of things uh, today, along with some of the other model output. Let's go through the chart data then. This is how the latest UK Met Euro run. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. He's looking for a big diet on Sunday. So a nice uh, ridge of high pressure across the country, bringing plenty of dry weather, but still quite cold uh, night and morning. Now, as we're going to start next week, you pick a bit more of an easy wind. That probably drags in quite a lot of cloud and will be chilly. Then the high pressure starts to slip away into central and eastern Europe, and we bring up a southerly, southeasterly flow. So that should see a recovering temperature by the middle of next week. I think the temperature's back to normal. About around 13, 14 degrees, something like that by day. And we probably lose the frosty nights as well through uh, next week. But mainly dry, you'll notice, uh, even up to next Thursday with anticyclonic influences. I can't, again, with that high pressure in control through the weekend to start of next week when it shifts around to a southerly, southeasterly middle, middle of next week, turning uh, milder with that. And then we get to the end of the ICOG run. Just signs of lower pressure trying to come in from off the Atlantic. But we still have an anti-cyclonic influence there anyway. Up to midday next Thursday, 20th of March. And then the KMA uh, looking like this. Once again, high pressure is a dominating the scene. Bringing a lot of dry weather with uh, southerly winds. Uh, more of a low pressure influence though. Setting in around 180 hours. Certainly compared to ICON. So turning properly unsettled still. 
down with the KMA as low pressure comes in then by the 22nd of March, bringing wet and windy weather in with it and we end up looking like that yes 25th of march uh still with low pressure in control so cool probably quite cold and unsettled there with the kma so the kma sticking with yesterday's idea but it turns much more unsettled in around a week's time what's the gfs got to say right this is the gfs midnight run again high pressure dominating the weather through most of next week gradually slipping away to eastern europe and bringing up a southerly wind as it does so so turning milder through next week a recovery in the temperature by day 10 we're into a rather showering sort of northwesterly type flow but still a lot of dry weather uh, to be honest it's not until about 300 hours which is around the 25th, 26th of March, it finally turned properly unsettled with low pressure then coming in from off the uh, Atlantic. We end up looking like that, 29th of March, uh, cool and showery there. But the GFS midnight burner has pushed that back, that change to unsettled weather, that has been pushed back by uh, the GFS midnight runner. It was pushed back. This is the sixth step, this is the latest, again with high pressure in control. And in the ascendancy for the weekend. And next week, high pressure is in Central East Europe. We bring up this southerly, southeast flow looking very much milder, I think, through the middle part of next week. We'll lose the cold nights. Daytime temperatures should lift up as well. Uh, however, by day 9, 22nd of March, got some low pressure developing there, bringing some showering conditions. And then we turn perhaps. Um, unsettled for a while, with the 6th said, up to about the 25th of March, with lower pressure coming in off the Atlantic. However, we very quickly go back to a ridge again. So, uh, by the 29th of March, got a ridge uh, from Scandinavia down to the Azores High. Um, now, that's a bit different, again, from the GFS 6 said. It is quite difficult to make sense of what's happening in this final uh, week, 10 days of uh, uh, March. There's no sign of a Thomas Rope response to be strapped warm at the moment, I have to say, up to the end of March. But I do wonder whether the strapped warm is causing a little bit of uncertainty, a little bit of confusion within the model output. It's all quite straightforward until around the end of next week. But then when we get into that... Uh, the, the next weekend, if you see what I mean, and then through to months then, quite a bit of uncertainty I'm noticing within the model output. Might be down to the, uh, the effects of strap warm. It might just be something else. You know, it's very difficult to know. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and uh, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc., etc., etc. And don't forget to tell your friends about guys well, get them to subscribe too. And we thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Around 1818 subscribers gets us to 19.6k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. And by the way, the, uh, I'm sure you noticed that up, you know, eyes are a lot better uh, today, they settled down with a medication overnight, so the latest flare-up, I've managed to settle it down but uh, thank you so much to all of your uh, comments and kindness and concern. And, uh, yeah, it's just part of an ongoing long-term condition. So I'm fine. I'm all right. You know, just <laughs> just is what it is. I've suffered with it for over 10 years now. So um, uh, there we go. You know, just, just one of those things. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, let's crack on there. So GM, again, high pressure is in control and in the ascendancy through a Sunday, and then on into Monday and Tuesday, high pressure remains in control, but high begins to slip towards Central East Europe, it starts to pull up more of a southerly southeast wind, turns a lot milder by the middle part of uh, next week, with temperatures raising. However, VGM then turns unsettled with low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic around days 8, 9, 10. And possibly you can get something a bit colder coming in with that low as well as this uh, ridge begins to build through the Atlantic. Not a block, but a ridge starts to build through the Atlantic and possibly brings the wind around to the north. And then the ECM rounding it all off with high pressure once more in control and in the ascendancy through the early part of next week, gradually slipping towards Poland and the Balkans and bringing up a southerly flow 
as it does so. So next week sees a recovery in the temperature. Spring resumes after this week's sort of uh, wintry interruption. Still a lot of dry weather, though, until around days 9 and 10. And then some low pressure starts forming down to our southwest. Even then, I don't think it's particularly unsettled. And high pressure then is back in and the extended with the ECM starts to be towards, um, uh, starts to be towards Scandinavia there. So into the closing days of March, again, a lot of high pressure uh, domination. Quite a chilly ridge, I think, that, but uh, the emphasis is on dry weather. This is turning into a notably dry March, I have to say. Uh, OK, well, this is a precipitation forecast based on the East End Road from Toronto to Cobb. We've got wintry showers around at the moment. Uh, they'll be dying out over the weekend as high pressure slips over the country. Next week, looking mostly dry for much of the week. A little bit of rain in the west later on. Um, but it's not until about day 9, 10, which starts to bring, some, uh, bring up some outbreaks of rain. And then mostly in the west, actually, the east probably has about 10 days of dry weather other than the uh, current showers. These are the options on the table in the East End Ensemble today, four day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 23rd of March. 21 members of the East End Ensembles with low pressure to our west and southwest, high pressure uh, to the northeast. And so we're a bit unsettled with that, especially in the west, but probably quite mild. And then we've got 14 with a deeper low, more centred over the country. So that is a more unsettled option. We've got 10 again with low pressure owned just to the west of the country. And then we've got five stronger with the ridge. So by day 10, it does look as though we've got some uh, lower pressure going on. Bit of an uncertainty about how deep the low pressure is and therefore how unsettled it will be. But it looks like we've got a bit of a, a bit of low pressure there uh, by day 10 with most of the uh, ECM ensembles. Now in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. And it gets us to the 28th of March. 18 members of the ECM ensembles then have low pressure over Scandinavia and high pressure in the Atlantic going up to Greenland. So that bring the wind back around to the north. That's hinting at a colder uh, end to April, uh, to uh, March, I should say. 17 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure right over top of the country, but does have a mid-Atlantic ridge going up towards Greenland. So again, you could envisage that can start to set up a colder pattern for months end. And then 16, including the patrol and the operation run with high pressure sort of away to the north and to the west, but low pressure to the south. So that keeps things, I guess, reasonably mild up towards the end of uh, March there. So a bit more uncertainty, actually, as we get towards uh, the end of March and possibly hinting something a little bit colder. Uh, right, let's have a look at CFS. I bet we're done. So these are 500 billion bar high times. Break it down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 13th to the 19th March. The next week, with a low pressure south, high pressure is to the north. Winds coming in from the east there. So, uh, unsettled and quite cold, really, for the next few days. Showering cold, let's say. Uh, week two is the 20th, 26th of March. Low pressure to the south. High pressure is away to the north. The winds are probably coming up from a southerly or a southeasterly uh, direction. So, uh, that's going to have the most unsettled weather in the west and south and will be quite mild. Week three <laughs> will be the uh, 27th of March to the 2nd of April. High pressure and rich through the coast. That's going to be mostly dry as we uh, begin April. And then uh, week four is the 3rd to the 9th of April with high pressure in the Atlantic. And it's going up towards the northern blocking feature as well. Have a of low pressure more towards the west of Russia and the far northeast of Europe. But I reckon that could back westwards, actually. Now, in the end, this, uh, this whole white area might be a trough of low, and we might bring some quite cold air down into that. But it's four weeks away. It's a long way out, so not really worth being concerned about. That might be, you know, uh, a blocking cold response to a strap warm. It could be. We'll see. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you make sure, share. Everyone, before we do that, drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaslows. Get them to subscribe to. And we thank you so much, everyone, for uh, doing that. So, tomorrow we're going to have a 6 UK weather forecast. We've got Jamie Friday and take the 14 day. Uh, keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And bye for now.